In Brazil, a thousand kilometers north of Rio de Janeiro, lies the most diverse concentration of marine life in the South Atlantic. There are hundreds of species, large and small, many found nowhere else on Earth. Here, people have lived in harmony with the sea for centuries. But as in so much of the world, the balance is under threat from oil exploration, dredging, industrial fishing. Rather than benefiting those who live here, few jobs are created while livelihoods are threatened. Despite these pressures, a small team of Conservation International staff have not only helped protect this area, but are extending its boundaries. This is how they're doing it. Abrolhos National Park was the first marine park in Brazil. I've been doing research here for 13 years. Initially, very focused on the biological side of the area. Our early work here was about supporting the park. Originally, it was a very small project. We started by doing a diagnostic. It was really important to understand the region. CI science helped show why the park was important. But with only one patrol boat and a vast, wide open sea, enforcing rules was daunting. Esses barcos foram pegos numa operação de fiscalização e esse foi flagrado com pesca com espinhel no interior do parque. Espinhel, uma grande linha com centenas de anzóis. The ocean is a big place and it's difficult to enforce rules. So you need to win people over by finding win-wins between people and nature. We started to look at the impact of protection on food supply, on the economy, on climate change. In other words, soon we were studying ecosystem services. There was no shortage of subjects to study to demonstrate how people benefit from the sea. The team made species most important to fishermen a top priority. as well as species important for dive tourism. The team discovered the world's largest rhodolite bed. They also set out to show links between nature and traditional ways of life. É, isso aqui é uma tradição indígena de fazer cordas e, e, e fio para rede de pesca, né? Que não. It's one thing to gather data on how people benefit from nature, another to get the word out. This starts at the grassroots. We have been trying to engage the locals in all steps of research projects. We engage locals in data collecting. It can be fish counts on the water. This is very important to bring more trust to the data we will later show. Saímos em volta da hoje saímos para para pescar para análise no laboratório. Me sinto bastante feliz em participar. A gente tem, tem que ter bastante cuidado e bastante respeito com a natureza, senão não vai sobrar para os nossos netos nem para os nossos filhos. They also designed a high school program, providing credit to students who help with research projects. Meu nome é Bárbara, sou filha de pescador. Eu através desse projeto eu conheci, eu mergulhei, fiz mergulho livre. Conheci várias espécies de, de corais. 
Armed with data, partners, and a grassroots network, CI could make the case for a new marine protected area. This one further north in Corumbau. Here, the Patacho have fished for centuries. Mira, meu tetravô era pescador, meu avô era pescador, meu pai era pescador. Eu comecei a pescar com oito anos de idade. É, tem filhos meus que estão tá pescando, então a, o mar, para mim, é, eu considero como minha casa. This time, the goal was to create a different kind of protected area, an extractive reserve. In some areas, fishing is allowed. In others, there are no take zones. Fish multiply in the protected areas, then spill over. A partir da, do, do momento que foi criada a Resec, foi criado áreas de uso restrito na Resec, onde os pescadores é, não ficaram satisfeitos. Soon, though, it was clear. Fishermen living in areas with no take zones had more fish. Quer dizer, esse ano, agora com cinco anos depois que foi criada a área, nós tivemos um aumento que é fantástico. Tivemos um aumento de mais de 200% no estoque na foz desse rio. Então, com 83% de, de toda a população de pescadores estavam totalmente satisfeitos. Another benefit. Because in Brazil, reserves have a voice with the government. Locals could ask for services they never had, like electricity. É, em algumas comunidades não haviam escolas, então é, devido ao fator que não tinha energia elétrica. Então, então assim, a minha educação, é, eu, eu morava num lugar sem acesso a nada. Mas hoje em dia, aqui em Cumuru, tem várias, meus colegas todos estão, estão em faculdades e acabam retornando para a própria comunidade para trabalhar aqui. The next chapter in expanding protection came in the south. We are in the Caravelas estuary. This is a large area of mangroves. It's a especially important area because it works as a nursery site for many species. Many locals are descendants of slaves. They've lived on crabs and shellfish for over a century. Here, industrial shrimp farmers came to set up shop. The shrimp farming was a big threat for this entire um, Kasuruba region. People was trying to create here the largest shrimp farm project in Brazil. Shrimp farming is hugely destructive. The Abrolhos team went to work, taking the case to the government, showing how mangroves help with climate change, protect coasts, and are vital to marine life. But they couldn't take on the shrimping industry alone. Here we are in CI's office in Abrolhos. As you see, it's a small office. There's only four of us here. So to get things done, we must work through partners. They activated SOS Abrolhos, a coalition of 26 partners. They launched a local media campaign, complete with locally produced videos. The work paid off. President Lula of Brazil personally came to Casaruba to declare it a national reserve. Ninguém esperava esse essa essa pessoa tão importante para o Brasil. Os brasileiros Lula hoje é tipo comparado um deus, né? The SOS Abrolhos Coalition had an important role in bringing the President Lula to this region. It's a real example of amplification of our strategy to the national scale. These successes are something to celebrate, but the threats are always there. Recently, fishing fleets from other states have been appearing. Many use damaging techniques, endangering marine life and workers. CI is now attempting the most ambitious expansion to date, one that extends from the mangroves to the outer shelf reef. They know it's not enough to protect just the beautiful areas. They must also protect the broader ecosystem that sustains them. 
We are about to go to the sea on this helicopter. We are surveying where to create a marine corridor. The goal is to create a corridor that protects commercially important fish through their life cycle. This starts with birth in the mangroves. When the fish get older, they move to the midreef. Here, there's no protection. When full adults, they move to the outer shelf to spawn. Their larvae floats back to the mangroves. So the life cycle extends from the shore, out to sea, and back again. And if sea eye has its way, this will be a never-ending cycle. Given the Abroyos team's many years in this community, its science and its partnerships, the outlook is promising. And that's good news for all of us. Because as we've seen, this slice of ocean sustains a much broader ecosystem, one supporting a range of life, including the world's most common mammal, us.